You think about everything that's going on right now. You think about the fact that they want to go after and deprogram, by the way, anybody who might have voted for Trump. There was that memo about the FBI trying to look into churches that said they're mass in Catholic because maybe somehow those people were the extremists. Well, my friend Dinesh D'Souza, this has not gone unnoticed by him. He teamed up with Dan Bongino. They have a brand new film out, a brand new film called Police State, policestatefilm.net. That's the website you need to go to. And it looks at this entire issue, which frankly is pretty scary because you know what? If it can happen to this person, it can happen to you. In fact, it's even happened to Dinesh. I'd like to welcome Dinesh D'Souza to the program. Dinesh, good to see you. Congrats on the film. Thank you. I uh, was about to say I'm very excited about the film, but this is a strange film to be excited about. I actually never wanted to make a film like this simply because I just never wanted America to reach a place where a film like this needed to be made. But alas, here we are. We have so many uh, ingredients or aspects of a police state in our society now that it is um, this is quite an urgent call to awareness and a call to action. We've seen some examples here. I mean, I, I like to think about um, well, you've got a great trailer, by the way. The opening is just incredible. It shows how that, you know, they're going after everyday folks. You interview some people that have have come under fire. Do you not? And, and I know that you yourself have been a victim of this during the Obama administration. Walk us through what's happening now, and then we'll get into your story as well. Yeah, the um, the film has two kinds of people in it. One is the, the whistleblowers, the informants, the people who can lay out the hidden architecture of the police state. Like, how is it structured? How did it get started? Who's behind it and who's running it? Those kinds of questions, which are really important. And then the other type of person in the film is the ordinary guy who's going about his normal life and comes face to face with the police state, feels the kind of hot breath of the police state on his face. And this is the power of a film, because if you and I were to tell people it's becoming a police state, Americans are, well, they have no experience of it. They're like, I don't see a Stalin overcoat. I don't see a Hitler mustache. How can it really happen here? I don't really believe it. I don't think there's going to be a helicopter over my lawn or a FBI battering ram coming through my door. And see, I think this guy who says that couldn't be more wrong. Uh, and that's why a film can not only show it to you, but help you to feel, to experience, to see what that police state really is like. Do you think that we've lost our way? I mean, you think about what Hillary Clinton has said about how Trump people, I mean, they've gone from deplorables to now the deplor deplorables that need to be deprogrammed. And there's been such this focus on, oh, it's those bad Trump people. When it, in, in the current state that we're living in right now, Dinesh, Christopher Ray, head of the FBI, is actually coming out and saying, listen, we need to be very aware, and I'll play this soundbite for you, we need to be very aware of the threat of Hamas-style attacks here in America now. In this heightened environment, there's no question we're seeing an increase in reported threats, and we've got to be on the lookout, especially for lone actors who may take inspiration from recent events to commit violence of their own. So I'd encourage you to stay vigilant because as the first line of defense protecting our communities, you're often the first to see the signs that someone may be mobilizing to violence. I'd also ask you to continue sharing any intelligence or observations you may have. And on our end, we're committed to doing the same so that together we can safeguard our communities. We're back with Dinesh D'Souza here. He is out with a brand new film, ladies and gentlemen, just an incredible film that looks at the, quote, police state in America. You can go to policestatefilm.net. The premiere is happening in Las Vegas. It's a virtual premiere, I understand, Dinesh. Virtual premiere in Las Vegas Friday over the weekend. People can download it. They can see it on Rumble. Um, but again, all this information is at policestatefilm.net. What's your reaction to Christopher Ray saying, uh, you know, hey, maybe we ought to focus on those people coming across. He didn't say this, I'm paraphrasing, but the people coming across the border right now, because that could be a real problem. Well, it would seem that the easy way uh, to stop that would be to close the border. 
And the fact that the Biden administration flatly refuses to do that shows that they have other priorities. I wouldn't say they want terrorists to come over the border, but it's like they, they want an open border for political reasons. They want people from other countries to come here over time to get driver's licenses and to vote. They want to shift the balance of political power kind of permanently in their favor. So they don't mind this child trafficking, if the cartels are benefiting, if Hamas is sending terrorists through. This is something they'll deal with, but they're not willing to pay the price of saying, all right, you know what, it's time to close the border. The other thing is Christopher Wray, not long ago, was before Congress, uh, very confidently saying mm -hmm. that the real threat to America now mm -hmm. is uh, domestic, not only terrorism, but extremism. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that softening term is so he can sweep in groups like Breitbart, Turning Point USA, uh, the Heritage Foundation, mainstream conservative groups that are supposedly the prelude or the precursor to further radicalization. So the FBI mm -hmm. has been con conducting this truly manhunt of conservatives now and so then when he comes out and goes well i want you to trust us i want you to report everything you hear we're like really no i kind yeah, of feel like yes. i got in the south in 1932 where i'm gonna not that i don't need cops but i'm going to be very wary before i share information with the cops you guys yeah. actually are just as dangerous as the criminals on the street well you wonder right because if you're the one now sharing it are you then going to be looked at as part of the problem because they're like oh wait a second you said something about these people coming across the border well maybe you're the extremist that that we want to target i mean like it's all it's all kind of getting mumble jumbled well i mean it's not just that christopher ray said that he thinks that patriots and conservatives pose an equivalent threat to isis and al-qaeda so it's not just that by guilt by association by reporting something you're getting sucked in it's that you are in a separate category of potential terrorism at the same threat level as the hamas terrorists as the al-qaeda and isis terrorists so i mean these are people they could be just exaggerating and saying these things, but I don't think they are. Even when Hillary Clinton said that the MAGA Republicans are like cult members, some people were mm -hmm. like, there she goes again, she's exaggerating. I think that there is a, a malicious purpose to this dehumanizing rhetoric. I mean, you may remember back to the 1990s in Waco when they burned all those buildings, all those families got killed. A lot of Americans were like, ah, that looks bad, but guess what? These people are kooks, they're, they're cult members, who knows what they're doing in that building. So there's a tendency that when you dehumanize someone, it becomes an easy prelude to treating them badly, wow, incarcerating yes. them, obviously in the Nazi But we're case, seeing it right now them. unfold with Israel, right? I mean, this, this dehumanization that somehow now we don't care about the 1,400 innocent victims that were slaughtered in just such a brutal, disgusting, horrific, violent way. I mean, suddenly it's Israel's fault, according to the students at Harvard and plenty of other universities with, uh, you know, great pedigrees. I mean, that dehumanization thing is a big, and, and I think there's some correlation, shall we say, between that dehumanization of the 1,400 Israeli victims and, well, you know, MAGA conservatives and white oppressors, so to speak, in this victim mentality that's perpetuated by the likes of Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar and that the Democrat Party, frankly, has grabbed onto. Their, their model is the, the de uh, decolonization. They treat Israel as a colonial power and they treat families that essentially are living in kibbutzes as, quote, settlers, as if these families kind of came out of nowhere. They have no ancestral claim to the land. They just moved in on other people's homes. Well, this is the ancestral land of the Jews. The Jews have been there for 4,000 years. And so, in fact, Islam in the seventh century was the colonizing power that swept across the Christian lands of Syria and Jordan, captured Jerusalem. Um, yeah. So the, 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 there's a kind of- uh, Yeah, people forget that. They were the colonizers originally. Absolutely. And, and converted and, by the sword. And they were proud of it. So the, um, in other words, they were proud of conquering as opposed to converting people at will. They did con convert some people, but they also conquered everybody who posed any kind of resistance. Mm -hmm. And you are also right that that same anti-colonial model is used inside the United States to create division based upon race, based upon gender, sexual orientation, now the new transgender issue. So there's a linkage between the domestic politics and the international politics. 
You yourself were a victim of this, and I think it's important to hear, I mean, especially as we look at the IRS hiring 80,000 new agents, I mean, despite the fact that somehow, some way, Hunter Biden was able to get away with being a foreign agent unregistered. I mean, even Barack Obama had said to his staff, you're not allowed to have family members doing this. So he's collecting millions, doesn't report it on his taxes. You know, Joe Biden actually took some creative ways to, to get around paying a you know, some 50,000 bucks in extra taxes he probably should have been paying with the, the way he incorporated himself. All I'm saying is they've got these 80,000 IRS agents. They're expanding the FBI to go after anybody who's conservative. Y- you appropriately name your film Police State, policestatefilm.net. That's the place to go if you want to see this and get all the information, everyone on it. Um, wh- where Where does this lead to? Tell me what happened to you, because that was sort of the beginning of it. I mean, I think Barack Obama, he really, he he, he was, dare I say, a bit vindictive. Um, explain what happened to you, Dinesh. Well, um, you know, the roots of the police state go back to after 9-11, because that's when the government got all these police powers, these ex- enhanced powers. But of course, the objective was for those powers to be used against foreign terrorists, not to be used against fellow citizens, not to be turned inward, if you will. That's what began in the Obama years. Mm-hmm. In my case, for a trivial campaign finance violation, by the way, well motivated, I was trying to help Wendy Long, a college friend of mine who was running for office. I didn't get anything in return. Obviously, I hadn't. it was a first time offense. Normally, I'd get a misdemeanor a slap on the wrist, but no, I felt the full force of the federal government. Now, and I ended up doing eight months in overnight confinement. Oh my gosh. Um, oh my gosh. So- and this is because you gave a little extra money and 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 some they said this was campaign finance violation and suddenly you're in confinement for eight months. Exactly. Now, even then I have to You say, by the way had a documentary, it. did you not, on Obama? Right well, I got a film just weeks earlier. Yeah. I mean, five weeks after my film was in the theater. I, there were two FBI agents at my door. And uh, so this was indeed, as you say, the vindictive narcissist in the White House. But see, I thought, Trish, at that time, it was a one-off. And, uh, you know, I didn't see it as a precursor to what would happen to Carter Page, Papadopoulos, Michael Flynn, Roger Stone, of course, now Trump. The escalation of the police state has been so rapid in the last two years that if you went down defining features of police states, you would find almost all of them present now in the United States. I mean, you take the worst regimes of history, North Korea, China, Iran, the old Soviet Union. What do they have in common? Well, they have mass surveillance of citizens. We have that. They have widespread censorship. We have that. They have ideological indoctrination in the schools and the media. We have that. They tend to be one party states to try to lock up the leader of the opposition party, criminalize dissent. We have that. Uh, They go after religious liberty. We have that. Uh, and, and finally, they have political prisoners. Well, we have that. So to one degree or another, all the characteristic features of police states are now evident oh uh, in this country. It's frightening. It's frightening. You know, I'm so thankful that Elon Musk bought Twitter. He tweeted, by the way, or retweeted. Somebody had mentioned that Twitter had become effectively a, an arm of the FBI, uh, an arm of the, the State Department. It was like part of the government. And we, we've seen increasing evidence. I, I credit the work of also America First Legal with some of the things that they recently uncovered just this week, showing that there was a very deliberate effort to suppress speech. I mean, for goodness sakes, the New York Post, right, was not able to say that the Hunter Biden laptop was under investigation by the FBI. That was 51 X spooks and hacks came out and told us not the case when, in fact, it was the case. Right. So that Russian quote unquote, disinformation they claimed was all wrong, turned out to be actually right. And their stuff was the misinformation. So it's really, I think, putting us in treacherous territory. I, as a journalist, I, you know, I don't know, Dinesh, like I'm kind of naive. Like I grew up in a world where you used to be able to say what you thought. And by the way, nobody totally held it against you. You were still friends at the end of the day. This is very, very different. And I'm very aware. I mean, I'm thankful for places like Twitter. I'm thankful for Rumble um, because, you know, you, you just don't know, right? You never know what's going to trigger them. Yeah, I think this is uh, this is the underlying message of the film is that that's 
we're not living in the America that you grew up in. We're not living in the America that I came to as a teenager in the late, late 1970s, yeah. that we've seen a dark turn in this country. Unfortunately, Republicans have been somewhat complicit, not only after 9-11, but also because they have almost obstinately refused to see what's going on. They're a little bit like the antelope or the wildebeest. And even if you tell them, hey, there's a predator in the trees, look right there. They're like, oh, no, no, no. We think it's the wind. Or we think that if there is a predator and jumps, it's not going to land on my back. It'll go on someone else's back. So this... Because they're so concerned about getting elected. I mean, is that it? Like, in other words, as long as it's working for them in the current space and time, they don't really care. It's, it's a combination of fear. Some of them are also conservatives kind of in the operational sense. They don't like change. They don't like to be mobilized. They're like, no, it's not as bad as you say. Let's not rock the boat. Let's not get too excited, Dinesh. So this is all the, you know, now look, if you're living in a, if you're like Jimmy Stewart and you're living in a small town in, in you know, this is the man who shot Liberty Balance mm -hmm. and there's a good sheriff and everything's working well, then you can say, you know, I'm a man of the law books and I'm not going to be an outlaw. I won't go for my gun. I'm going to open my book and find a, a legal precedent. But, you know, if you go out in a covered wagon out west, you're encircled by outlaws. They want to burn your homestead and rape your wife and kill your kids. And then you say, I'm going to go look for a law book. You're deranged. You don't. You have no grasp of the situation you're facing in. So that's kind of the message of the film, uh, and I'm I'm hoping that it is a wake up call to America, but also a stiffening of the spine of the Republican Party. Can I ask you? Are we going after the wrong things again? When you think about, and again, there's a, this is very fluid. We don't have all the information about the attack in Maine and Lewiston, Maine, relatively near where I mean, I I grew up in New Hampshire. I know you went to college in New Hampshire. Um, I spent a lot of time in in the Kennebunk. Portland area, Summers as a kid, Lewiston, you know, I, I didn't think was a, you know, a place where something like this would ever happen. Again, we don't know much right now, but we do know that the gentleman in question spent two months in a mental health facility. I mean, should we be spending a little bit more time like looking at people that have actually been committed, questioning you know, why they're, they're coming out again. Like I, I'm pretty libertarian. I don't like the idea of locking people up, but you've got people pushing people on subways to their death in New York city. You've got, you got the situation, horrible, horrible, horrible situation in Maine. Why aren't we actually focused on those threats? Exactly. This is a, you could call it a an intelligence failure, right? Because the truth of it is we have these mass shootings. They're almost always done by some deranged guy. And when you look back, you find out, oh, there were a number of warning signs in the case of the Parkland shooter, for example, multiple signs of threatening people and, and so on. And yet the the people in, in the in the in authority who know about this don't take steps. And now, why is that? Well, I think one factor is because so much uh, of our intelligence agencies now are looking in the wrong place. I mean, they're looking, you, you know, we heard about the FBI report about traditionalist Catholics. I mean, how absurd is that? I mean, because you go to, to mass in Latin. I mean, that one just floored me. Moms who go to me. board meetings, uh, pro-life activists. Uh, I'm quite sure that, you know, my film team is under some sort of surveillance. Oh, they're making a film called Police Did. We really got to oh, watch I'm sure you this. are. You better be careful, Dinesh. We know what happened well, last time, careful. at least with Obama. <laughs> you know, I am careful. But my point is, this is how you miss this stuff. I mean, this is how the U.S. intelligence agencies miss the Hamas attacks. It's a mm -hmm. failure of intelligence in Israel. But how come we didn't know about it? We have massive resources massive technology. So again, I think that our intelligence agencies have uh, are, not that they are sort of have lost sight, they have deliberately turned the cameras away from the kind of people that we gave them this power to look at. And instead, they're looking at other people. Again, they're doing it because it's a political witch hunt being driven by the Biden regime. And that's that is the force behind the police state. It's the it's interesting you use the word regime. I, I mean, yeah, cause that's, I that's how that, it feels. It feels that way, not just because of the election of 2020, it feels that way because, you know, the Bill of Rights lays out rights that are supposed to be inviolable, or as the founders put it, unalienable, which means yeah. even majorities cannot take away those rights, right? They cannot take away your right to free speech, my right to conscience. So the fact that if you go down the list of rights in the Bill of Rights, uh, I mentioned free speech and conscience, right to assemble, right to petition the government, uh, equal rights and equal justice under the law, and you realize not a single one of those rights is secure under Biden. 
Well, that's the very definition of a regime. It's an unlawful government and police states are inherently lawless. Wow. So I, I, I'm so excited for you for having made this movie. Dan Bongino, I have enormous respect for as well. The two of you together, you guys are a force. I, I know that he, you know, he was a, a secret service professional. You, you, you're such an incredible intellect. I am so excited for this film. I just want everybody to go and see it. Police state film.net, a production by Dinesh D'Souza. They are always incredible. You're going to be able to see it everywhere, but I'd recommend everybody go to the website, right? Because that's where they'll see how they can stream it and where it's going to be. And they can join the, the, the virtual, everybody comes together, right? To watch it there in Vegas, the premiere. It's a live event. And so we have uh, music, we have the full screening of the film and then the live Q and A. So it starts at, um, at 8 PM Eastern, uh, on Friday night, and then the streaming, the DVD will all come after. Thank you for doing it. Thank you. And I thank you for being here. My good friend, Dinesh D'Souza, police statefilm.net. Thanks, Dinesh. Thank you.